seeing that we have a quorum uh, the, of town council members present, I call the second meeting of the council, town council to order at seven o'clock. Welcome all. Uh, this meeting is being broadcast live and being recorded by Amherst Media. Copies of the agenda are in the back of the room. Uh, we will be joined at, by around eight o'clock by Councillor Balmum, and we will be joined by the town clerk uh, at some time into the meeting. She had a personal event. <coughs> Are there any announcements, comments, or adjustments to the agenda by either members of the council or the town manager at this time? Um, seeing none, I will just point out that the agenda this time has items on it that we are putting there and they will be there as a routine, but obviously if we don't have anything that fits under that item, we will just go on to the next. To the best of my knowledge, there are no resolutions or proclamations. We'll then move on to public comment and the town requires a public comment period at every public meeting. The council will not engage in, in a dialogue or comment on matters raised during the public comment period. May I see a show of hands of people who would like to be recognized to speak? I see one. Um, in that case, please rise, come to the forward, <coughs> and share with us your comments. We'd like you to keep them to three minutes if possible. That's not over. You got it all. Uh, first time I've addressed uh, the public body in Amherst, although most of my career was addressing bodies in widely separated places. Um, two things have uh, caused me to come. One is having gone to a meeting about the uh, common and the parking and traffic uh, with some people from Grace Church. I'm not representing Grace Church. I'm representing myself as someone who's been there a long time and who observes what I'm tell you about. And, and the fact that there's a feeling of town government is accessible now, and that's a very happy feeling. Um, I'm concerned about the, the Main Street parking lot because of the, uh, what I see as an usher sometimes and what I see as people coming to services. Uh, th that parking is extremely important to the church because it's close. Uh, and there are lots of, uh, we're an aging uh, population. I, and I can tell you that feet change over the uh, decades, and that's a concern because more and more people are using, uh, walkers using uh, cushions when they get there. Uh, so I know there are other uh, constituencies that have concern about the, uh, the uh, Main Street parking, but my interest is uh, Grace Church. It's, it's a busy place during, not only on Sundays, but on the evenings and during the day. Uh, educational events, devotional events, and, and as you may know, there are a number of concerts that um, use the uh, sanctuary, uh, so it's extremely important. And um, because of that, uh, I would urge the council or suggest or recommend or the council appoint a committee uh, because I know there's urgency with the town common plan, but I think it, it would behoove everybody if there were uh, more public representation. I know the town staff had worked very hard, uh, and I know there's... Could you lean forward to the mic, please? And, and I know that um, uh, there's a desire to get moving, uh, yet I think that there's often some, a group could say, uh, we've done, wait, waited so long and now we have to do something, but I think it's a little bit more time wouldn't hurt. So hopefully I'm within three minutes, and thank you for your attention. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else that cares to comment during the public comment period? Yes, sir. Please come forward and state your name. Good evening. My name is Andy Anderson. I live in District 5. I want to thank you all for uh, your efforts here as the new the town of Amherst uh, Council, 
Uh, this is a historic gathering. Uh, one of the other historic features of the new charter is the uh, call for the use of ranked choice voting to elect the members of the council. And I see that on the agenda tonight, there is a uh, item to establish the committee that is uh, laid out in the town charter. So I just want to say a few words about uh, the importance of this. Um, you may have seen many of the news reports about the use of the, the historic use of ranked choice voting for elections in Maine. It's been supported by newspapers from Hampshire Gazette to the Boston Globe to the New York Times to the Washington Post. It is a system that has been introduced many times in the state legislature by our former state representative, Ellen Story. Um, it has been supported by our current rep, Solomon Goldstein Rose. It's supported by our uh, uh, legislator-elect, Mindy Dahm, and our state senator, Joe Comerford. It is a system that in the recent uh, question five on the ballot was supported by 69% of the residents of Amherst. So the people of Amherst are hungry for this. It is something that I believe we could actually put into place in time for the next election in November of 2019, even though the system that was set up does allow for the first use possibly be to, to be as late as November 2021. So this does, to do it earlier, it does require that this committee be established as soon as possible. And hopefully this is just a perfunctory vote to get it started. But I just wanted to make a plug for the importance of doing this sooner rather than later. Because it will take uh, most of the time available to us in order to bring this about by November. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else that wishes to comment at this time? Okay. The next item on that is listed on the agenda, but we will not be attending to tonight is hearings. We therefore are going to move on to presentations and discussions. And I just want to point out, this is not a period in which we will be taking action on these items. It is merely a period to discuss. And since we are a public body, these kinds of discussions have to be held in public. And so we hope that they will be as educational for you as they will be for those of us on the council. Um, the first item on for discussion, and this does not require a motion, is a proposed standing committees of the council. And since this was my item, uh, let me just spend a little time uh, mentioning a few things about it. Um, first of all, in the process of putting this forward, um, there's nothing sacred. Um, I enjoy edits, I enjoy other people's ideas, and I am not offended by them. Um, it is listed under the discussion section because that's exactly what it is. It is not an action item. It is a starting place for our discussion about how we should organize as a council, and we are required, as I mentioned before, to do this in public. So as I looked at this issue, I looked at a couple different towns, our cities, if you will, or in our case, the city to be known as the town of Amherst, um, and they vary all over the place. Some have mayors, some have councils and professional managers, presidents of councils. And as you look at their committee structures, they range all over the place as well. Northampton, for example, has four. Uh, Franklin has six. Cambridge has 11. I lived in Cambridge, no prize. Um, so what I then looked at, uh, what issues are important to individual council members? And can you find your issues in these committees? Then another area is, are most, if not all, functions of the council in the town of Amherst com covered by these committees? And then finally, is the task or focus of most, if not all, committees of the town of Amherst neatly found within these committees? And again, this is not 
the end all to be all. It is merely put there for your discussion. So I open the floor for that purpose. Councillor Shane. Do we still need to hold the button down? Yes. Um, how would you like us to have the discussion about this? Because, for example, on Finance Committee, one of the things I'd like to talk about is how many people. It's clear in the Charter we will have that committee. Yes. So it, we've got a question of the number of people and the number of non-voting council members. So that seems to me a different discussion than the others. So it's, it's a question I'm asking. Should okay. we do them one at a time? Should we do them as a set? Uh, I think one at a time would be appropriate, but let's start with the issue of only one of these is required by the Charter, and that is the Finance Committee. And the Finance Committee does require, based on the Charter, that there be three members of the Council, and they are voting members, and that there will be other members, residents of, Am of Amherst, and they are not voting members. So in that case, under each of you, these, you will see that I have not designated the number of councillors, uh, nor have I talked about non-voting, I mean, no, nor have I spoken about the residents. So let's begin with, at, let's go through each of them, and then as we finish that, to s talk about whether or not we feel there are, is a different organizational structure, talk about whether or not we feel there's something missing, and so forth. So let's start with finance. Because um, I may just not have found it, but in the charter, I didn't find a number. I do find finance committee, and so I, I, it's on, Mandy probably can help me out here, but on page 18 is where it mentions it, but it doesn't say how many. So that's why it started with just whether it's three, four, five. Um, the current finance committee has, in the town, has seven on it. Um, so I, I just don't, I don't see a number in the charter. Councillor Haneke. Uh, there is no number in the charter as far as I know. Okay. And the only I, number that we talked about in terms of any committee is that there is a minimum number of committee members for multiple member bodies, and that is three as a minimum. But the finance committee and any other committee I don't believe has, okay. and I, I just look there, it doesn't have a, Thank number spe specified. So under the word three, just cross that out and leave it blank and we'll have that discussion. Thank you. Finance Committee. Yes, Council Brewer. One of the things that's so fascinating about building this airplane as we're flying it <laughs> is I feel that Finance Committee should be talked about in context with Joint Capital Planning Committee and Budget Coordinating Group as well, because saying, I know we have to have you appoint the Finance Committee sooner rather than later in terms of where we are in the budget cycle, but I think it would be a mistake to assume that we don't need to also be talking about BCG and JCPC at the same time. And so there might be people who would serve on all three of those. There might be people who spread themselves around associated with that. And I think if we don't talk about the context of the different finance bodies that talk about the budget, we would be missing something. So I'm, okay. I'm not sure the best way to approach that, but I feel like we need to bring that into the mix. Okay. Do you want to go further on and talk about those at this point, Councilor Brewer? The charter does mention both bodies. They are somewhat different than they were under the previous form of government, although not drastically different, mm -hmm. although there have been some interpretations that see the budget coordinating group as being more of a town manager um, body than it was previously considered more independent. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of this is just up for discussion, and maybe it makes sense tonight because you've outlined all these things to talk about all the things, but before we make a final decision about finance committee to kind of circle back to those other two finance okay. budget involved bodies. Okay. Other comments are things to be added to the Finance Committee conversation. Yes. Um, is there an expectation that council members will be on, um, say, two to three committees? It certainly is an ex If you look at the number of council members, of which there are 12, 
and 13, counting myself, and I'm as much likely to be on a committee as anyone else. Uh, and you look at the number of committees, there would be an expectation that a council member would be on at least one committee. Okay. But it certainly could be that they would be on more than one. Because it seems that the finance, if you're on the finance committee, and you have to belong to those two other groups, that the person who's on the finance committee has a really heavy load. It does seem that way, yes. Yeah. Other observations, yes. Councilor Steinberg. Yeah. Having been a chair of the former finance committee, I think it might be helpful if I just take a moment to talk about the relation between the committees and what the general function of the finance committee might be under our new form of government. Mm -hmm. um, in the prior form of government, we had um, the select board was um, the executive and the finance committee was actually a part of the legislative branch. It was a, um, an, a committee appointed by the uh, town moderator and its job was um, very explicitly, um, the words were to advise the town but that is code word in the um, way uh, law was written at the time it was developed, town meant town meeting. So when there was appointments to the Joint Capital Planning Committee and the Budget Coordinating Group, there were two representatives from the Finance Committee as it then existed and two representatives from the Select Board as it was then designated as well as two members from the school committee, the library trustees, and then professional staff who have a significant role. That was the um, general structure of the committees. And one of the things that we do need to think about is because our role is um, legislative, but it is also has some executive responsibility in appointing and setting priorities for the town manager, um, how that all fits in and how many members we envision going forward, how that balance works how, um, and the, the functioning we see. So it is a, a difficult issue. I also see that the finance committee is gonna probably be um, working a little bit throughout the year, it's not gonna just be um, at the time that the town manager proposes a budget, um, but we're gonna to have to define what that ongoing responsibility is gonna be. It will be very different from the prior finance committee because the prior finance committee actually had a long time between when the town manager's budget was provided in January and when a uh, town meeting report was put together and recommended budget came from the finance committee to the town meeting under the new form of government that we're now operating under, uh, we may be providing um, advice to the town manager, some guidance, but um, the town manager is going to propose a budget and we're gonna have a much shorter period of time once we receive it before we have to act on the budget than under the prior form of government. Okay, that's very useful. Uh, any further or specific comments about joint capital planning or uh, the budget coordinating committee? Joint capital planning has, wow. yes, Kath. Okay, uh, I just sorry, wanted Council to, Shane. Shane. I wanted to build on what Councilwoman Brewer said. Um, my understanding is that both of these, the Finance Committee and Budget Coordinating Committee and Joint Capital, should or would normally be meeting, start to meet now. I mean, the budget is moving. I mean, e either this minute or in January. So I think trying to think of how are we populating those as a group mm -hmm. is important. So Joint Capital, as Andy just said, had two select board and two finance on it. Correct. The way the charter's written, we have town council members on it with no number. That's correct. And maybe some other people. So we could put finance on. So making that decision as a capital proposal start to flow into the town, I, I think if we don't do it tonight, we should have a longer discussion at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Because I looked at their schedule, and the schedule usually was to start meeting in January. Okay. Other 
particular comments, observations about finance? Councilman Brewer. I think it's important to hear from the town manager at some point in here not too long from now about how he perceives the somewhat changed roles of these bodies given the change in the charter and given the practical nature of day-to-day -day work. So joint capital planning was always something that was advising staff, basically, as opposed to it being its own decision-making body that it, while, it, while it did make recommendations to town meeting, the way it was written in the Town Government Act was that it was advising. It became somewhat more powerful than that in some respects. And so I think just trying to understand what each of these bodies will do. Will the Finance Committee, like the old Finance Committee, will, who met with department heads on a regular basis, you know, get presentations from all the different parts of town, would the Council's Finance Committee do that? Or would it be, would the role be more limited of the Council's Finance Committee because no longer advising town meeting, advising this body. And so I'm frankly confused <laughs> as to exactly where some of those lines are going to be drawn, and we may need to redraw them a little. Like the lines may be a little blurry as we go forward, but I, I don't think that just because we have words like council instead of town meeting, it's <clears throat> still 100% clear what each of those bodies is expected to do and at what point, especially given the changed nature of the budget cycle. Okay. Councilor Haneke, you had your hand up, and then I want to ask the town manager whether or not he would speak to that question. Councilor Haneke. So if we're looking at specific wording, um, mm -hmm. I would just say it might be helpful to include in the wording for the Finance Committee the authority that the Charter gives the Finance Committee under 55B, because um, it it could be read as slightly different than the wording <clears throat> in the current, mm -hmm. what was proposed. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I'll, I'll go broad too and say member-wise, I think because the residents would be non-voting per the charter if they are not council members, that it would be rec I would recommend an odd number of councilors on the committee, whether that be three or five, okay. um, and then maybe an even number of residents to keep the total committee membership odd, but that doesn't need to be necessary. And then I would also actually like to hear from the town manager on his idea of size of JCPC and BCG um, in terms of council representation on that, those two committees too. Okay. Before I ask the town manager to speak to this, is there anything in this group of questions that we would like him to consider in his response. Mr. Bachelman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think in terms of the Finance Committee, um, you should expect that there will be a, the function of the old Finance Committee will be replicated in some respects uh, with a new Finance Committee. I think the Council would expect and I would expect that our department heads would make presentations to the Finance Committee uh, in a timely fashion. Um, because I think what you as a council is going to want to know that your Finance Committee has evaluated the budget and can make an informed recommendation to the full council. In many communities, all council members attend the budget hearings of the Finance Committee, and that's an option that's available to you as well. So I think the Finance Committee, <coughs> excuse me, is, will be very, not dissimilar to the previous Finance Committee. The timelines will be different though because it's the, the council, the manager does not have to present a budget till May 1st, and the council has until, I think it's May 1st, and, and um, the council has a time to adopt it has, uh, by June 30th. But I think we would start that process. There isn't a time urgency at this moment in time. We are still doing our own internal staff budget hearings, which is where I meet with department heads and groups from the department to hear what their proposals are and then from that information, I build a budget that I then would present um, to the council, and then the council would react to that. Um, for the other two groups, the uh, budget coordinating group and the joint capital planning committee, those are really just, those are, the budget coordinating group is really a communication tool. It's a way for the three, the elected bodies to communicate with each other and to be on the same page as we progress through the budget making process. So that's 
you know, I, I don't think you have to worry about the number of, it's not a, it's usually isn't a voting uh, role for the BCG. It really is about communication, keeping everybody up to speed on where we are, what the latest budget projections are and things like that so that the Board of Library Trustees, the school committee and the council will be all on the same page with the staff as we are working through the budget process. Um, JCPC, again, is um, an advisory committee uh, to the to the manager, the way I read it, and um, but it, but it's a very important one because this is the committee where um, the elected bodies from the the town get together and kind of weigh the challenges that every each of, of them faces: the libraries, the schools, and the town. And there's discussion about prioritizing things given the, the limited resource we inevitably have. So that will happen again later in January, most likely. Are there further questions to the town manager to clarify any of those descriptions? Um, yes, Councilman I just, Shane. Is, is it helpful to have the four people that were on before? I mean, now we're talking about, is it, it's two town council people, two from finance, which could be the extra, pe the non-voting members of finance, so having four people on? Do you have any sense of the size of it? Um, I had not thought about having two, basically you're saying, we, do you want four counselors representing the well, council? Or, or I guess if we, if we have a finance committee that has three or five council members and two other people on finance, mm -hmm. they could also be, in theory, on JCPC. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something I think you, It'd be wise to have a conversation with the school committee and the board of library tr library trustees too to make sure that they're not feeling overwhelmed by the council. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand what you're saying. It could be non-council members who are represented, um, and that would certainly be an option as well. Um, yeah. Councilor Pam, it's not clear to me whether these uh, the people who sit on these three committees. Well, the, the finance committee and then the other two committees should be the same people or whether you want to spread them around. That's really just a practical question. That really is an issue to take up with the council. Um, that's not an issue with the manager. Yes. Councilor DeAngelis. I see advantage to having at least one council member who is on all three and uh, sort of streamlines communications between the three and, be, and with us as count, uh, the council. So I would like to see uh, that happen, uh, hopefully having a volunteer um, who would do that, maybe more than one councilor who did that, but I would love to see a volunteer for that. Okay, thank you. Other questions on the mix, if you will, of finance committee, joint capital planning, and the budget coordinating committee. Then let's go back to the larger description, if you will, as it appears here, although clearly it needs to be um, taken back and include all of the words that are in 5.5b of the charter. Uh, are there other issues here that raise questions or other issues that you feel need, need to be uh, placed with the Finance Committee? Councilor Haneke. Um, I was thinking that moving, um, since Finance Committee has issues with capital assets already proposed and there is a JCPC issue and capital improvements seem to go with finance, the proposal under Planning and Economic Development Committee that had infrastructure and capital assets I thought would actually be better in the Finance Committee's role instead of the Planning and Development role. So I would suggest moving it from that committee up to the finance committee, the infrastructure and capital assets. Further comments or 
statements about that? Councilman Brewer. Councilor Brewer. I know we have to figure that out. Um, one of the things I'm struggling with a little is, and, and maybe Mr. Steinberg can help us out again or, or Mr. Bachelman, but the advantage, of course, is we have a year-round government now. But Finance Committee has typically been, and this is not a negative statement, but a reactive body. So the Finance Committee looks at the budget that the town manager is going to be proposing. They look at the articles that were being forward, brought forward to town meeting, say from conservation associated with the purchase of land. And everything was on the town meeting schedule. Now we have things all year round. Now, so in addition to the budget being perhaps somewhat more of a, it is already really a year round effort, these other items would be too. And so I think that's part of where I'm trying to figure out all the things that fall under their purview, because if the Conservation Commission is not going to be limited to talking about things at spring or fall town meeting, or associated necessarily with a budget cycle, it could be at some other point during the course of the year, and we would expect, as, as I believe from, from the wording we've got here, for the Finance Committee to go ahead and make a recommendation to the Council, you know, whether that's in August, as opposed to during the actual budget cycle. So does, does that make sense, mm -hmm. that this is, this is something that is going to be playing a larger day-to-day -day role in all of the work that we do, rather than having a ton of work over a relatively short period of time and then a calmer period of time? It, it does make sense to me, but other councilors? Yes, Councilor Steinberg. Yeah, following up on what Ms. Brewer said, um, the Finance Committee was charged under the old form of government to provide advice to the town meeting about the financial implications of all other articles. It didn't mean that um, the, um, it was a second version of a planning board or necessarily would have a role in developing or changing what was in, plan, in planning, but if there was an obvious financial consequence to a planning proposal, it was, uh, that was the limit of its charge, was to provide advice to the town meeting about whether there were financial consequences to the article. Um, the words that are under right now in the draft under planning and economic development com committee infrastructure and capital assets are, the, are maybe that um, that also is really what we're talking about with the joint capital planning committee that is thinking about those issues and um, so the question as to whether that little piece of it belongs, where, where that most appropriately belongs. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is that um, it is a year-round committee in its prior format in the town meeting, and I envision it as having a year-round role to some extent in the same way. It doesn't mean that it was meeting continuously throughout the year, or and it certainly had more intensity during one part of the year as the budget was being developed. But um, just to, you know, people were asking about this after the um, Saturday meeting when we were talking about the region budget and the, somebody asked me the question, well, how are the schools going to know how much money to develop into their budget and how does, um, how, how does that happen? And uh, that also was most directly related to the conversation on Saturday regarding regional schools. Uh, what happened in the past was that um, in October, uh, the town manager and the finance director would make a report on the financial circumstances of the town, a fairly broad general report. Many of you attended this year, and then um, it, the, it is the uh, part of that projections are made about the year ahead um, in that last year, FY20, which is the budget we're about to be developing. 
And um, in there, there was a recommendation of what might be considered for the appropriate amount for the schools and the library to use in developing their budgets and for the town manager to use in developing his budgets. Um, <coughs> this um, round, for the final time, the old finance committee did convene and did issue guidelines essentially um, analyzing and commenting and then repeating the recommendations from the um, prior process that we had in place in the October meeting. Um, and of course, next year, we're going to have to have a different process in place for doing that if um, the um, council, either directly or through the finance committee, is going to have a role in saying, yes, um, the projections indicate that these are appropriate figures. We think they're appropriate figures. Go forward, develop budgets, and bring them back to us. Okay. Additional comments on this? Okay. Before we move on to the next, does uh, anybody else care to comment on the makeup of the Finance Committee? So far, the one comment has been there there be three to five counselors and an even number of residents. Okay. So let me just try to summarize a bit here. What I'm hearing is from the Planning and Economic Development Committee that the infrastructure and capital asset function would be moved up to finance and that in finance we need to go back and cite the specific words, if you will, from 5.5b of the charter, uh, that to stress that it is a year-round committee and that from this committee would most likely come the members to J joint capital planning and also to budget coordinating and uh, that the man it, and there would be an expectation, as the manager has stated, that there would be presentations to the finance committee from the various departments, et cetera, from around the town. Now, I'm not asking for a motion. I'm just summarizing so that as we move to a rewrite that we've said those things. And again, at this point, the um, the only comment on makeup of the committee is that it consists of three to five counselors and as voting members and an even number of residents. Okay? Yes, Council. Council Could we talk about that composition just a little more? Please. And, and hopefully some other people other than me will talk. Um, but I'm feeling at this point, as we're inventing here, that we probably need a larger number than we might otherwise someday decide we need associated a larger number of counselors on this than may be necessary in future years just to get us started. And so I am believing at this point that five counselors and two non-counselor residents would probably be roughly the right number. I would not want to have more than two non-counselor residents. I would want to have a substantially larger number of counselors there, but there might be people with specific expertise in the community that we could certainly talk to at any time, but there might be a couple that would really be a good fit for an initial finance committee under this new regime. But I would really like to see us have at least five counselors on there from the standpoint as well of having many people engaged, but also then that would make it easier if we do decide to choose JCPC and BCG out of that group, then it would feel to me that they would come as counselors, they would not be non-voting residents that would be on those bodies. And so five gives you more people to choose from for those other two bodies. Okay, additional comments? Councilor Steinberg. I guess the only thing that I would say we could give some thought to yet is the question of whether all council members of the Joint Capital Planning Committee 
need to be members of the Finance Committee or whether there could be other members of this Council who are not on the Finance Committee who are on JCPC because there's really two separate roles um, and need to, sep to, to distinguish them. One is the amount of money to put into the capital plan for the year ahead and that certainly um, is something that's going to be discussed in the Finance Committee. But the other is once you've done that and you've decided how much money we have to invest in our capital needs in any given year, um, the question of what are the specific projects and how do we uh, weigh the request from the library for some specific items and how do we weigh the similar requests from the town, municipal departments and from the schools um, is not specifically a um, financial matter, it's a priority matter and so we may um, not want to have to require that every council member on JCPC be a member of the Finance Committee. Okay. Other, yes, Councillor Pam. Okay. Um, this is to Council uh, Councillor um, Brewer. Uh, why only two people from um, residents? Wouldn't you, I would think maybe you'd want um, four. Councillor Brewer, did you want to respond? That's actually really not necessary, but if you want to. Okay. Other comments. I I'm going to step back and say on a comment on. Um, actual the composition I have a personal preference that we would have some additional people from the residents beyond to uh, I think that this is one of those many ways in which we can increase uh, participation by our residents and so uh, I'm not saying that's how the final form will come out it's just I wanted to express my own opinion Are there any other comments on the Finance Committee? If not, we're going to move on to Planning and Economic Development Committee. And note that we have, if you will, moved infrastructure and capital assets to finance, but I do want to point out, as Councillor Steinberg has said, many of the issues relating to capital and and uh, assets and infrastructure are beyond just the financial side of it. So uh, there was some thought as you look at this uh, to planning and economic development that it kind of rests in more than one place. Yes, Councillor Shin. Um, having seen the title of this, I looked at a few other towns. Many towns actually have this committee. Um, and so it made sense to me that we'd have it. What I found is in the example I'm gonna use is Cambridge, because I didn't do all of them. But Cambridge, in addition to what you had drafted here, put in a town gown a link on economic development, so it's, working with the educational institutions, developing some exchange with them on how they're affecting the development and the economy of the town. So I was gonna suggest an additional mm -hmm. sentence and I'm not sure how to word that, but it was missing and Amherst is so much entwined with our university and our colleges, it feels like that should be part of this issue of economic development. Yes, Councillor Schreiber. So I, I haven't had the chance to study every town. I did look at Northampton, which has a lean and mean committees of the council. But on the other hand, they have a robust committees, you know, general committees. So I think that may be part of the question here is like, when do we need a committee of the council? And when do we need another or an existing committee that will include councillors, but can be more expansive? So even the discussion about the you know, the Finance Committee, there are some arguments that that is almost beyond the Committee of the Council, that it's a committee with councillors on it that advises the Council, but it's... And under C, where the Select Board, in its um, effort to help um, 
ease the transition, if you will, to uh, the council form of government, they have done this extensive collection of all of the committees. I think one of the questions I had as I was trying to pull this together was, um, is, does every committee need to be able to relate to one of the council committees? Or maybe not. I mean, there's ad hoc committees, there's all kinds of study committees. Councillor Schreiber. Yeah, so I, I, I personally mm -hmm. see this one to be useful. Um, I would probably throw the word conservation. Uh, okay. And there is something I would probably want to urge. So, because right now the, the name of the department is the word conservation okay. in it. Um, I know that the planning board itself is very interested in, say, a joint zoning subcommittee. So that could be somehow related to this, where the planning board plus a small group of counselors could be those working together to look at the zoning bylaw. Did, could you just repeat that, please? A joint? Um, the planning board itself yes. was interested in, so right now they have a zoning <coughs> subcommittee. They were interested in the prospect of perhaps a joint zoning subcommittee that includes the council, or at least parallel zoning subcommittees so that we're not canceling each other's efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either because either body can the town council or the planning board can propose, um, say zoning bylaw changes. Mm -hmm. At some point, they have to go to the planning board. Right. That, by the way, this does not prohibit that an individual counts a committee of the town at some point would make a presentation directly to the council. It just means that there is a body under which similar things that the counselor is dealing with are talked about, are coordinated, have a place in which we are thinking of the larger picture, not just individual committees. Councilor Melbaum. Belmont. Bell Milne. Bell Milne. Um, so I can see how these different topics can be put under one committee, like planning, zoning, and then this housing, and environmental stewardship. And I'm just trying to envision what the agenda and meetings are going to look like, and how are we going to be able to focus on different, and will we be able to really do deep work when there is so many different facets that we're covering in a single committee? Or are there going to be subcommittees within this, or how would that work? There could, I. I assume there could be subcommittees. I also assume there may be committees of the town that have names that are exactly like what are in here. And you, that this committee of the council would then make sure that it's abreast of what is going on with the committee of the town, for example, uh, in the whole area of environmental stewardship or sustainability. There may be a town committee for sustainability but the Committee on Planning and Economic Development would be in touch and know what's going on with that committee. And the counselors on that committee would spend some of their time in that manner. Yes, Councilor DeMont. I guess I'm wondering, um, I know that Northampton has um, a framework very similar to this, um, but I'm wondering, uh, if this is necessary, if, if it's a, you know, like an unnecessary layer of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. uh, and what, you know, how it will be helpful. Because maybe it will be helpful, I just am not quite seeing how it will work. Um, if we already have the committees that exist, um, I'm just wondering if a particular initiative, that will be one more hoop that it will have to go through before it gets to the actual council. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could explain that, <laughs> I would appreciate it. In my, again, looking at how other councils have organized, my thinking was that if you are dealing with a variety of committees that in some way are linked, we all sit in meetings and say, did you know that so-and-so committee is also discussing that? So rather than have those various committees all come to the council, the 
pot, the responsibility of these committees of the council would be to help pull that together. Perhaps make some, ask some committees to have joint meetings together. Um, so that there is some way in which we are collectively taking the responsibility of thinking of the whole versus thinking of the individual pieces. And again, um, I throw it out as an idea for discussion and the group may decide they don't want to be organized this way. Yes, Councillor Haneke. So <clears throat> I was gonna say something similar to Councillor DeMont and Schreiber. Um, when looking at the whole list and this sort of steps back from just one committee, I was thinking about what do we want our committees to do? <clears throat> and the way I was thinking about committees was that we should have committees to help us as a council get our work done. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at some of these, you know, governance organization legislation, one that sees all the bylaws. That to mm -hmm. me makes a lot of sense because we are tasked with passing bylaws. Mm -hmm. And so a committee that that gets funneled to before it comes to us, mm -hmm. to me makes some sense. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple of things like that that we are tasked with that I think a committee could really help with, appointments, bylaws, maybe some other things. And then we've got policy making to do. And I think the question becomes, in my mind, how is it best for us to get our policy making done? Is it done in a council as a whole? Mm -hmm. Is it done in committees? And I think that's where Councillor Dumont was sort of asking too, like what, what are these committees going to do? Is it another layer or is it not? And so I guess I'm struggling with specifically the planning and economic development and the town services committee, the non-appointments part of the, mm -hmm. and review of the town services committee. What would their role be that helps us as a council get our work done or get our policy done? And I'm having problems envisioning that in my own mind. Okay. Councilor Schreiber. Um, so I'm gonna <laughs> plus one to that. So mm -hmm. I keep thinking to our orientation, right? So we're told to, like, we focus on policy, we focus on you know, bylaws, we focus on budget, mm -hmm. we focus on everything else that makes us mic. Mic. I'm sorry. We focus on the mic. Uh. We focus on the mic. <laughs> The placebo, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And we focus on things, you know, issues that other parts of government can't deal with. Right. But that would be a way of framing the macro committees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as seeing how this discussion goes, maybe, I mean, maybe we can start with some critical mm -hmm. standing committees and then other ones as they seem, there, as there seems to be a demand. So if you, um, look at it from that framework. Finance obviously is there. A portion of town services and appointments because the appointments function is there. And the governance organization and legislation is really the bylaws, the rules, et cetera. Those are the kind of essentials, if you will. The other one that has not been discussed at all is the communications and outreach. And I, this really came from my own experience of trying to think about our responsibility to do our district meetings, do our annual forums and so forth. And to what extent do we, would we like to have some way in which we have a coordinated approach to those, we identify maybe two months in the spring and two months in the fall when we always hold those meetings, that we have some standard materials we take to those meetings, some items we want to discuss at those meetings and bring back to the council. Um, is there a way in which we want some assistance in terms of how we think about and organize for those meetings? That again is not a quote, policy making function but it is a function that we must pay serious attention to based on the charter and our own feelings of communication. Yes, Councillor Dumont. 
Uh, I also really uh, like the idea of the Communications and Outreach Committee, um, uh, but have some um, issues with the um, Governance Organization and Legislation Committee because um, number two, review ordinances, orders, and resolutions in consultation with the town attorney. Um, I think that we would receive consultation from the town attorney in any event mm -hmm. about these matters that come to us. So I'm not sure that we need a, a group of us to work with the town attorney to do that. Because um, it feels to me like it would be something in the order of an executive committee of the council. Because this is very important. Um, yeah, it, it's may, interesting because even as I read in other towns um, or cities, a um, couple of them require that just about anything that might affect a law, bylaw, whatever, has to then go through this committee before it then comes on to the council. So at that point, you already have somebody coming to one of the sub one of the co committees of the council and even that committee of the council going on to this legislative committee the first function is actually something that we've already appointed an ad hoc uh, committee to and that is the committee on internal rules so what i may be hearing from you councillor dumont is that number two maybe is not something that belongs in a committee, but stays as all of the council. But Councillor Ryan, you had your hand up. No? Okay. Yes, Councillor Steinberg. Yeah, the other way that I was looking at it is that uh, something, and I'll use planning and economic development uh, topics that are listed for that committee, if they, if that committee is um, hearing from the planning board and has discussions from the planning board about something that's being proposed it is going through that committee, it would seem that that's where the review should be and that um, I, I was therefore a little bit uncertain as to why we would have a second committee once the first committee has taken yeah. on that function. Yeah, I, that's one reason why I did not include that comment, if you will, or that kind of function in the governance organization and legislative committee, it seemed like adding even yet another layer. Yes, Councillor Dumont. Uh, one other thing that I would suggest, um, following Northampton's lead again, um, is if we were to create a um, planning and economic development committee, that we call it maybe planning economic development and sustainability since we do have sustainability as our overarching principle um, the the office in northampton is called the office of planning and sustainability their their town staff office okay, okay. councillor pam yeah. um, getting back to the um, communications and outreach committee in terms of our district forums, um, I see that not as a, arranged by a council committee, but as something done by the individual councilors with the town government. Because I was thinking if we want to have different um, department heads come and speak, that really we'd have to make that schedule with the town to figure out when is the best time and rotate them through so we can't all be trying to have the same people at the same time. Um, uh, just a logistics issue. It, 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 what I was trying to do was create something where those kinds of requests would at least be in a coordinated way. Uh, so that the, um, and if, for example, we have something of great importance to the town that we would like to hear more broadly from, that we all have similar materials to take out to our council meetings. It's not to tell individual councilors what to do at their meetings, but it's to support individual counselors in getting what they need for their meetings. Is, I, are we saying the same thing or not? Well, I guess I saw a, a bigger role for the town government as opposed to the town council in that. Okay. Okay. 
Councillor Schreiber. Yeah, so just back to Northampton. Um, <laughs> so they have four, four committees, as I can tell, of yes. the council. One's finance, one's legislative matters, one's city services, and one on community resources. So back to the, the, the point that uh, some of us have been making, that something like this could be incredibly valuable as a committee of the, you know, especially the sustainability <coughs> energy part. So as a council of the, I'm sorry, as a committee of the town rather than a committee of the council. So I think we do have to pay attention to really where we individually need, you know, where we as a group of 13 need expertise versus where the expertise is, you know, outside of us. So is that a suggestion that we not have a committee like that or that we have a committee like that and it includes members of the town? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sort of probing the question as to whether or not we need this at this point. Okay. Okay. Yes, Councilor. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the uh, planning and economic development and sustainability. Right. Thank you. Councilor Ross. Thank you. Uh, so I don't know that I have a fully formed opinion on this yet. Uh, but one of the roles I think that this could serve, uh, especially under planning and economic development, which has, uh, as defined, a fairly broad scope, um, is that we, we certainly don't want to be in a situation where we are uh, overruling the expertise that lies in our, our citizen committees. Uh, however, in, in some situations where we have um, many different citizen committees that are all uh, different and yet impact uh, ha have impacts that relate uh, it might be and it might be coming forward to us with proposals or ideas uh, the role of such a committee could be to sort of interface uh, with the citizen committees to figure out how we bring things forward. Uh, so I don't know that such a situation would exist, but if we had uh, the planning board had stuff to bring to the council and the ZBA and maybe the housing trust, uh, it could be the role of the committee to then figure out how, they prior how we prioritize those proposals uh, and work with those to bring them to the council. Uh, because at current, I'm not quite sure how if I was the housing trust or if I was the planning board and I wanted to bring something before the council, I suppose I would email you as our president, right. um, which makes sense, uh, but in the future you may find yourself uh, with a very full inbox from different committees and it may be wise if there was some type of intermediary that they know, that those boards know, okay, if you want to get this on the council agenda, your first stop is perhaps consulting with the planning and economic committee that then will go to the president and figure out how do we prioritize uh, these issues over time. And so that's one way in which uh, a committee could serve, uh, not necessarily to be the expertise on the issues, but to help the council organize and prioritize what is coming from our other committees. Okay. Councillor Brewer. I am, I remain concerned as we continue to circle around about this, and it's been a really interesting discussion, that we are adding layers that we don't need yet. We may need them for exactly the reasons Councillor Ross just pointed out, but I would much rather at this time not have a planning and economic development committee even though I do want us to move forward on a sustainability committee, which mm -hmm. is a separate committee that may have counselors on it, but more importantly has a variety of people from the community that have expertise in that area, and it's something we've been waiting on until we knew we had the council in place. Okay. I feel like we are going to end up with this extra layer of people having to go through something or people to send something back to when we're not sure yet what that's gonna look like. And I really caution us to while we look at other communities, Northampton doesn't have the answer. Northampton is, has a mayor, and Northampton is based on tweaking of many years of history, and when you join that council, those are the committees those are. And then they tweak it a little bit this way, and they tweak it a little bit that way. We have the opportunity to make a start here where we do the things we absolutely have to do, like rules, like bylaws, like finance committee, and then we sit here and we realize, you know, we'd really like some other people to work on this issue 
and maybe eventually over the course of a year or so we figure out what the umbrella is all those things fit under but I really am worried about adding layers and umbrellas and whatever metaphors we're using here when we don't yet need them because we have plenty to do without trying to coordinate a planning board presentation to us as a committee. I think right now leaving that to our president to then, and if there are too many things that are happening, for the president to come back to the council and say, wow, three different committees want to present to us over the next month. How do you think we might balance that? And then maybe out of that conversation, we'll say, okay, you two people go off and work on that. But I, I just don't want to set up this many structures to begin with. Okay. Councilor Sharp. So other organizations that are trying to find their feet often start with trial committees, so mm -hmm. sort of ad hoc committees. I assume so this I, is all I would, trial. Uh, I, uh, yeah, so I would suggest that what <coughs> Councillor Brewer and many others have mentioned mm -hmm. might be a lean and mean might be a way to start. So if we, yes, Councillor Ryan. The distinction was made earlier between um, committees that help us get our work done and committees that are looking long range dealing with policy. Mm -hmm. And at the moment it seems like the planning and economic development committee is the only one that really is concerned with policy. And the others are more concerned with helping us get our work done. Anyway, um, the thought is lean and mean. Sounds good to me mm -hmm. as well. Um, and we should develop perhaps other committees as, as needed. But right now perhaps focus on what helps us get our work done in the meantime right now. Councilor Bono. Not, not knowing, uh, I'm not sure what the timing of this committee should be um, for the economic development, um, but I think that we do need uh, to address some of the issues of the kind of development we're having and how to uh, really utilize our assets, whether it's um, creating um, employment opportunities or um, increasing our tax base, because that was a common concern that many of us did hear of the rising property taxes. And and uh, so it feels like, and, and we do not right now have a, a committee around economic development. So I'm not saying it needs to be a committee at the council level. Maybe it's a blend of um, ideally of council members as well as uh, residents with the expertise. But I would like to see an economic development and sustainability committee, which is really helping us utilize the assets that we have, the cultural assets, the historic assets, our universities, and how to use that to generate more revenue, to engage people more, to make sure everyone is reaching the potential of living the kind of life they want, whether it's housing, whether it's jobs or Okay, but not necessarily a committee of the council. I'm not, um, sh I mean, I don't know what the pros and cons would be to have it just, I mean, in my mind, I can see the benefit of having council members as well as residents from, okay. with different expertise. Okay, yes, Councilor DeAngelis. I support having this committee because I think there, it, there's a way in which I envision it as counselors pr who are participating on the other committees being the people that feed us and so that everything isn't going to be lumped on the president or we're going to have three presentations because we're, there would be an ease of communication from uh, the zoning board meeting or the planning board meeting and what we were and we were bringing that to each other in the, in a discussion format. I think Lynn, uh, Councillor Griesmer said something important when she talked about holistic. Uh, we're constantly in this town, it seems to me, we're working at cross purposes. You know, the planning board does something and they don't listen to the design committee or they do or, you know, there are all these ways. But if we could bridge, if we could be the communicators between these different committees, uh, to make it whole, um, I think that would be very valuable. Okay. Councillor Bowman. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Angelis completely. But, De Angelis, thank you. And um, 
And I think the one other benefit of that is uh, giving another opportunity for people to participate when we have that committee. Um, so the public, again, has that layer instead of just making the town council as the one. I mean, I know there are many opportunities for people to participate, but that committee becomes another avenue to receive the comments, some of them, and then bring distill those into the bigger council. All right. Other comments? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I think you've hit all the key points mm -hmm. of the conversation. The first, I think, but you can prioritize. The first order is how are you going to manage your business? Mm -hmm. And the urgency is the um, charter had already anticipated a finance committee, so you need to address that one. You will be asked or have been asked to make appointments, so you need a process for <coughs> managing that when it comes into the council. Are you going to talk about it here or are you going to shift it off to a committee that's going to have a more detailed conversation about it. Um, and then the other is the um, rules and regulations or, or uh, bylaws that come in. Those are the three big things that you'll have to really address in the, in, in actually, so those are the three big things that you're going to have to have standing committees to handle is, and also are these committees going to initiate action or are they going to be just processing things that come onto their agenda from this body? So I think that there's a lot of um, things that you already have a committee looking at rules and procedures that maybe that committee can look at and think about how you want to, the workflow to work um, for, mm -hmm. your, for your committee. Thank you. Other comments? Yes. Councilor Ross. Uh, Paul mentioned appointments, uh, which I think is one of the important ones and especially we'll be seeing later uh, how many vacancies that we have in our citizen committees. Um, and I, I think that there's a hope among a lot of the council that we can start to make appointments. Uh, one of the things that I might uh, recommend is we have these two different uh, committees here, town services and appointments and then communications and outreach. Um, the town services part, uh, Councillor Haneke raised sort of the idea about whether that's actually a necessary part of the committee. Uh, reading through the description, the only, I see one in five maybe are sort of the town services, uh, the review of the town manager, or not right. one in five, one in four, uh, the review of the town manager, uh, which I don't know if that's part of a standing committee or if that's an ad hoc committee. Um, and then number one, which I'm not sure uh, I, I completely can wrap my head around, um, but the rest are appointments, which would be a really important thing. Uh, but one of the charges of the charter and one of the things that I think we talked about, uh, many of us talked about over the past several months was trying to uh, increase representation in our committees and our boards, um, and especially bringing in underrepresented groups. Uh, part of that would be through appointment process. And so it, it might be um, prudent to actually combine those two committees um, because when we're working on appointments, uh, part of the committee's job would be to actually go through the process, developing the process of getting appointments and all of that. Um, but would there be some uh, benefit to having those same uh, counselors interacting with, say, the CPO um, and marketing those and making sure that not only are we um, hmm have a process in which we're, we're going through appointments, but also a process in which we are uh, broadly advertising those and developing a deep and representative pool of appointments. Okay. Yes, Councilor Schreiber? So we're allowed to jump all over the place? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> At this I, point, I'm gonna bring you back into- So one of the critical things before us is the master plan. So one of the things we have to do charter-wise is the master plan mm -hmm. review and then ultimate affirmation or whatever the term is. And so I, I do see that as a critical role of the second possible committee. But I would see that almost, in, a, in fact, that might even be called, because the master plan, in a way, covers everything that's underneath there. It, it right. includes economic development, et cetera. So maybe, so we actually at one point had a master plan implementation committee that was never fully, um, there, there was, um, a committee that was approved that was never fully populated called the Master Plan Implementation Committee. But maybe that would be a name for this, is the Master Plan Something Committee. And is that more and of it could a still thing? include, it could still be all the parts that are underneath it. So anytime anyone brings a zoning bylaw to us, whether it be us or the planning board or some other committee, it has to be compared to the Master Plan. So. This would be, if nothing else, a way of screening those 
But that would give it at least a little bit of sort of focus, charter-based focus, which it doesn't currently have. Okay. Councilor Pam. Okay. <clears throat> this is something about which I do not know very much, except that I've heard that the master plan was approved by town meeting and then revised, and those revisions were not approved. So are we going to um, look at the master plan and see if we agree with the master plan before we apply it? Um, I'm not going to try to quote from the charter on this, but I do know that we have to approve the master plan. Councilor Brewer. We don't have to do anything right now with the master plan. We are eventually responsible for adopting the master plan. Adopting. Town meeting was never responsible for adopting the master plan. They were never given the opportunity and they never had the legal authority to do it under state law. The planning board does that. There was a huge committee that grew out of the planning board and took about 20 years to develop that master plan. Um, it needs to be revised. That was certainly one of the intentions when the master plan implementation committee was proposed and then sort of started but never actually fully populated. Um, it was very long and boring story. And the I like the idea of using that as the headline for that second committee, if that's a way we can pull that together, because it is something we need to keep in our sights as something we will be having to do at some point. The master plan exists as it is. That It doesn't go away because of the charter. It didn't stop being right. approved because of what our charter says. We're still supposed to be comparing things to it, and we are still supposed to be revising it every so often, and at some point, the council is supposed to, but the council does not have to do that this month, next month, or even this year to make that happen. So in terms of all the other forums we have to keep track of, that's been one of my biggest concerns associated with the communications and outreach, and I like this idea of perhaps combining it with the appointments, is we need to come up with a backwards calendar for all these things because there are things all over the charter that are things we're required to do. We're required to have a capital planning forum. That's not in the same section as the other forums. Mm -hmm. The finance committee has to have a hearing. That's different than a forum. And, and once we lay all those things out, that's why I'm feeling like, despite having worked on the master plan myself for many years, that that's not as critical a thing that we have to get to in terms of potentially revising it or accepting it. But it's something we need to be aware of, and the fact that as things do come to us, we are supposed to compare them to the master plan exactly as it is, whether we change anything about it or not. And we would likely not change anything about it without having a huge public process associated with that, which would not mean 20 people in this room. It would mean thousands of dollars and thousands of people. So I, I just want to caution us a little on not jumping into trying to adopt the master plan when it doesn't need to be done in comparison to a bunch of other things we have to do. But it is an interesting way of retaining focus on the master plan to include all the things, which is basically everything, um, that fits under there and call it that. And then as we are getting some of the art legs under us associated with some of the other things, we can really start looking at, okay, what's the timing going to look like on trying to do the part that we're required to do in the charter? Councilor Haneke. Um, a couple things on a couple of different <laughs> matters. I'm going to start with the master plan and planning because um, that's the most recent. Uh, Councillor Brewer is right. We don't have to adopt it immediately. There's no time frame in the charter for that. But there is whatever has been adopted by the planning board is what any matter that comes to us that relates in any way to the master plan. So it doesn't have to be a zoning bylaw change. It can be anything that is bylaw related, has to actually go to the planning board for determination as to whether it's not inconsistent with the master plan as has been currently adopted. So at this point, that would be the current master plan until we would get to adopting or attempting to change anything else. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. I wanted to address Councillor Ross's combination idea. I actually like it. Um, but I wanted to make sure the Council is aware that most of the appointments that are coming to us will not be appointments we are making per se, that they will be appointments that the town manager has made that we are simply confirming. So most of that committee's work will likely be just confirmation work, not 
not finding and recruiting candidates for appointments we as a council are making. We will be making appointments to Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Board, and that's about it at this point, unless we make our own committees that have appointments. So those would be the two that we do need to recruit for as extensively as possible. Um, but the, the community participation officer part of that charge is to do all of that. And so a, a committee of the council that works on that to help the town manager recruit a diverse pool of candidates um, would be good. But I just wanted to clear that it is most of the things that a committee would be doing is just looking at confirming of appointments. So let me try something, but before I do that, just mention that we've not been a broadcasting in visually, but we have now received sound back. Is that correct? No. Opposite way. We're talking heads and there's no sound. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bockelman. <laughs> so people can see you, they can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, the, you, as you, obviously you can hear each other in this room, the sound is being recorded in the next room where Amherst Media is. There's something on the Amherst Media end where it goes from Amherst Media out to the broadcast where the sound is being dropped. Rebroadcast will have the sound because they're recording it in that room but right now it's not going out across. We've heard okay. from a number of people who watch this who are communicating. Uh, thank you. Um, okay. Um, let me try to summarize a little bit here, okay? This is always dangerous. We're going to start with those committees that we need to have because these are functions we need to attend to. They are, in fact, finance, a committee that, are, that receives and approves appointments and the whole issue of our legislative rules and internal rules and governance, okay? Those are kind of like a minimum. There is a suggestion that as we look at the issue of increasing and encouraging the broadest participation of people across the town, that we combine the whole idea of appointments, particularly committee appointments, okay, with the idea of communication and outreach, okay? And then, although we have periodically dumped the committee, we have now brought back the committee on the idea that we use as a focus for what was presented here as planning and economic development, the concept of master plan implementation and that that master plan would be a way to guide how we think about things such as zoning, housing, economic development, environmental stewardship, and sustainability. Okay? I'm not going to ask for a vote. I will come back with a revision on this. Um, I do want to ask or suggest that we take a, a 10 minute break. We will reconvene at 8 35 and uh, go on to item B and C. Okay, thank you. The next item on our agenda is committee application process and timing. And uh, I just want to again note that this is a discussion item. Uh, to start out, I'm going to ask um, Town Manager Bockelman to say a few words about this. Thank you, Madam President. So for, there are a number of vacancies on town committees and boards, um, some that are appointed by the council, uh, some that are appointed by the town manager. People have asked, how do I um, apply to be on these positions. Right now, there is a citizen activity form, or a, we are renaming it community activity form, on the website that you can fill out and submit. We are in the process of reviewing that form itself to make it less cumbersome for people to apply, to make it easier for people who um, 
who have never participated in town government before to be able to participate and thinking of a lot of little things that um, might have inhibited people or blocked people from applying in the past. So that's a work in progress. We have a new software. We're trying to uh, adjust to that. So it's a work in progress. We'll be welcoming your comments on it, but, but we will always have a place online on the boards and committees page that you can click on and you can put your name in to be serve on a committee. One of the frustrations for many people, I think, was that um, you, if you wanted to serve on a, three committees, you didn't know which one, you, could, you had to apply one, each time individually. And we're trying to get a checkbox where you can just say, I want these seven committees. I want to just put my name in for all seven. So there are little tweaks like that, I think, that will try to improve the process and welcome any comments from any of the counselors as we go through this. Are there other comments about the um, this particular item, the committee of application process. Yes, Councilor Dumont. I know the charter requires a resident advisory committee to assist the town manager in making appointments. Um, so I just wondered, and I and I I did talk to Mr. Buckelman about this, and um, uh, the. Charter doesn't really give any guidance about the, the process, so um, I'm wondering if you have any more thoughts about that, Mr. Bachman, or anyone. Yeah. Mr. Bachman, would you please address the question? Um, thank you, Madam President, through you. Um, I have thoughts, but I'm actually very open I, um, to how many people who do you think would be um, right to serve on such a resident advisory committee. Um, it also could be a group that comes out of the um, participation officer group in terms of broad. I think the purpose of that is to provide advice to a manager who may not be as familiar with the community as members of the community are. So in terms of the number, probably what I would suggest is that we draft up a charge for that committee as well so people know what they're volunteering for. And I, I, we could take a crack at doing that for you. <coughs> Are there other comments, particularly about the Resident Advisory Committee? So then we'll look forward to receiving a charge at some f in a future meeting. Are there other comments, particularly about the application process and timing? Councilor Shane. Um, I think the idea of revising the form is excellent. Um, I've heard when I was canvassing, when I was talking to people, that the applying for multiple committees was uh, time consuming and if they and they didn't always know which committee they they knew what skills they had and they thought I'm willing to serve and just tell me what committee you've got for me that I might fit on and so we could have check boxes with a more general form and I it, Northampton has one and I think some others might have it just on how do you make it easy and I I wanted to link it to the notion of a resident advisory committee or social media, I think that Evan was talking about earlier, that if we could figure out an easy way to say, here are committees, here are some vacancies, because I've had at least three people say, I have these things, where might I fit? And I don't know an easy way to answer them. If I knew where to go, I would say, I think you would fit in one of these three or four places. So if even on the web in some way that you could just say, where are the vacancies and what are the committees? We've got this great pamphlet from the select board that gives the charges and tests, but, but that's the first time I've seen it all in one place. But that would be a lot to ask a citizen to go through. So let me just summarize. We're looking for ways to advertise not only what committees we have, but where there are vacancies and how to apply. Councilor Haneke. So one of the suggestions I had, I'm glad you're renaming the form um, because you don't have to be a citizen to be on a committee. Um, so, so I'm pleased to hear that. Um, I'm pleased to hear that the form will allow checkboxes. I have a suggestion that maybe there also be checkboxes for certain areas of interest instead of actual committees because sometimes the committee is not, the name of the committee is not always clear as to what it does as Councillor Shane was saying. And so, you know, a general, I'm interested in the arts or sustainability or conservation or 
you know, planning or development or, you know, transportation, names, find some big categories that they could also check so that, or, or even just maybe skills too. What skills do you have so that, and, and then you can match that so that it doesn't have to be as specific as this is the exact committee I want to be on. Any other comments on this particular? Yes, Councilor Brewer. I appreciate the explanation we've, we've heard about the form. I wanna make sure it's clear that yes, I have some defensive ownership of the old form. So <laughs> let's just lay it out there. I hated the name. I was outvoted on that many years ago. I would have changed it to community activity form 10 years ago had I been allowed to do that, but I was outvoted at the time. I stopped having that fight. The form has gone through many iterations. Obviously, it started out on paper. It eventually went to the computer. Unfortunately, the systems we had available to us then would not allow people to, mul to apply for multiples. And yes, I had to tell people, yes, you have to fill it out three times, which obviously no one liked. Um, there were some questions on there that were hard fought and thought out as to how we could ask demographic questions that would not be offensive or off-putting. Nonetheless, some people found them offensive and off-putting, and some of them have unfortunately been dropped from this form based on the, the iteration that's happened here. So we will continue to talk about that. I think one of the things that's really important for people to keep in mind is who you let make the decisions about what's on the form and about how you match people up because we have not yet had a presentation of our three-part community participation officer. We've heard that three wonderful staff members who I have great respect for and have worked with in various aspects are doing that. None of them appointed committee members. This wasn't their area. We've had this town manager for two years. We have huge amounts of committees out there. So we have to figure out a good way to thoroughly match people up and to think about the form that isn't just a few people sitting around in a room, which we went through and then at least had to take it back to the select board at that time. So I would encourage us to get our ideas perhaps, however our president suggests to her or to, and then she can pass along to the town manager in terms of things we're looking for. But for example, in terms of demographics, we did ask about languages spoken. That remains on this draft of the form. We did ask about renting versus owning. We thought that was a much better question than asking people if they fell into the 50 to $75,000 range of income like so many things you see out there in the world. So you may come up with an, a better way of doing that. But the reason we did that was not as opposed to one curmudgeon who thought it was because we were keeping renters off. It was because we were saying all things being equal, please let's appoint a renter to this particular position. So being able to think up things like that and think up those skills boxes I think would be really valuable, but we have to keep in mind who are we putting that burden onto of figuring that out. And I think we have some excellent potential with that three-part community participation officer combined with the resident advisory committee that we can feel like we can funnel ideas you know, to them as this continues to unfold and find really good ways to do better than we've done in the past. But it was a lot of work to get it to the kind of crummy point it was before. So it's exciting to see us have new opportunities to do that as we keep in mind who makes what decision at what point. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, Councillor Dumont. I would just like to in, um, suggest that we do have a, a checkbox for socioeconomic level on the form. Uh, in what way, I'm not sure, but I think that that is, um, relevant and it's not something that we've looked at before and, and uh, whether or not you're a renter or not does not really equate with socio socioeconomic level. Um, also, could we add the uh, resident advisory committee with a little description of it to the list because I don't think it's on the list yet. Um, that might just be something people would want to sign up for. Um, and what was the third thing I was, I forgot. I'll think of it. 
later. Come back to it later. Other comments? Okay. We'll certainly have opportunities to forward other comments as now that we've looked at this for the first time. So with that, I'd like to move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the packet that was put together by the Select Board Committee. It's a very comprehensive packet. Uh, it describes all of our committees, uh, it, committee appointments. It points out where there are uh, vacancies. It gives descriptions for each of the committees um, and all kinds of information about them, uh, whether they exist based on um, Massachusetts law or whether they are appointed by the town, et cetera. So, this is a very comprehensive document. Um, I would suggest that we not jump all over the place, but we ask general questions about this. Can we clarify this point? Yes, and uh, excuse me, Councilor Steinberg. Yeah. Um, in the memorandum, that was the cover memorandum from uh, Mr. Slaughter, uh, there was a little bit of lack of clarity about uh, what it meant when a term showed an expiration date of December 31st of this year. And um, he was trying to explain that it was not meant that that was actually a drop dead date for that appointment. So I'm just going to read from the pertinent minutes, um, uh, really two sentences um, that will answer the question so that it's fully understood. This is from select board meeting of May 7 of this year. And the part I'm reading is as follows. Ms. Brewer moved to continue the appointment of committee members with terms expiring on June 30, 2018 until replaced or reappointed by the town council or the member's resignation. The motion was seconded by Mr. Walden. It passed unanimously. Um, so the, um, then in order to fit it into the database, those became listed with that date of December 31st, but that is not, in fact, the expiration date. The expiration date falls in the motion that I just read that was passed in, uh, by the select board in May. So, for example, if we look at, I believe it was zoning, right? Yes. If we look at zoning, which appears at the very end of the list, there are two people, three people, whose terms are listed as ending on 12-31-2018. And based on what Council Brewer has just read, excuse me, Council Steinberg has just read, those terms in fact end when replaced or reappointed. Replaced, reappointed, or the member's resignation. Okay. So whenever in this committee list you read 12-31-2018, it is whenever they are replaced, reappointed, or resign. The one exception is DPW fire, correct? And that, that committee ceases to exist unless it's reappointed as of 12 31 2018 Right? It's okay. I'm off the committee. <laughs> Councilor, Councilor Haneke. So I have a couple of questions that mm -hmm. I'm hoping potentially either the former select board members that sit on the council or the town manager can answer. Um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the budget coordinating group and JCPC, which have representatives, so I won't ask my questions about that. But the memo talked about, um, I think it's three specific committees that the select board has a designate, had a designated seat on. 
Um, has there been any thought as to what needs done about that? Is that something the council would have to redesignate someone for? Is that something that, that the council doesn't have to do anything about? Um, is that something the town manager redesignates a new member for? And similar to that, select board had representation on a number of sort of bodies that aren't really town created, it looked like. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, is that, again, something that we as a council are going to have to make a decision about whether the town council will have a representative on, or is that something the town manager makes that decision for? And then I just wanted an update on the appointment, since many of these committees we talked about, or that are talked about in this memo are, are manager appointed. Where are those vacancies standing, and are we going to face in the next 30 days a raft of appointment confirmations to us? Um, let me just ask if there's, there's a lot of questions all at once. I'd certainly like to ask Mr. Bachelman to respond to that, but I want to make sure that there's no other ways in which people want to ask a question so that we have a coordinated response. Yes, Councilor Ross. So just building on that, uh, what Councilor Harnicky said about uh, bodies that have a select board member as a voting member, uh, I'd also like to hear just a clarification about whether that would, dis would that person would continue, uh, which is my understanding from the memo, um, but also that uh, do we need to change the charges of those committees since uh, you know, within the housing trust, for example, it's specified in the charge that a member of the select board uh, would sit on that body. So in that particular instance, we're talking about both the charge being amended and then also clarifying the uh, appointment of somebody from the council to those. Correct. Councilman Brewer, Council Brewer, Councilor Brewer, I'm going to get this. Well, you decide what you want it to be, and then we'll write that in the rules. Councillor Brewer. That. <laughs> Thank you. Then we'll know what to say. Um, it has been my assumption, and we had sort of this conversation at Select Board, but it's been my assumption that basically the town manager is in charge of all appointments now, other than Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals. So... Anything that has a select board member on it right now, we wanted to have some continuity, as it says in the memo, and that if they came up with a great way to replace those people, I think both of the people involved would probably be thrilled, but um, they wanted to make sure they had the continuity and they had enough people for quorum, and we'd specifically asked their role, and they had good experience in it. I think what makes possible sense at this point that I'm sure the town manager would be happy to address is for him to make a proposal as to how to deal with these things. As we mentioned on page five, no, nope, page three, all the different things like PVTA. So PVTA has rules. We can't just decide amongst ourselves what we think would be a good idea. They have rules as to what kind of body is represented there. Usually it's a mayor. Um, or a select board member. Oops, we don't have either one of those. So that, I think, ends up on the town manager's plate in terms of finding that out. And then when it comes to something like UTAC, it's a matter of him thinking through, based on his experience with what staff he sent, what what's elected committees he sent, what he would recommend to us for those things. And it's, I, as I believe others indicated, figuring out on a timely fa fashion which things like have to happen all those things that are December 31st, as Mr. Steinberg pointed out, don't have to happen, um, as long as those people are willing to stick it out with us a little bit longer, which is great. And Zoning Board of Appeals obviously is gonna need attention sooner rather than later, simply because they need more members in case anybody needs to go away, um, because they have more bodies, according to the charter. Right. But I think that 
what I had assumed would happen after all of you just enjoyed reading this lengthy memo was that the town manager would have to come up with a proposal of, okay, I'll just change these five things and these other three things, I still have to find out what PBTA says in their bylaws as to who we're allowed to send and then based on that, what he would recommend in terms of who we send. Okay, first of all, um, Mr. Bachman, would you like to speak to this now or have it as an agenda item in the future or both? Sure, I can talk about it now just so everybody's on the same page. Um, yeah, I think the first thing is for the council to get a process for handling recommendations. So if I come in and recommend person A to be on a committee, are you just going to vote it? Are you going to delegate it to a committee who would then process this or not? And also, you again, the same way, you have some appointments that you have available to you right. that you'd want to say, how are we going to handle these? And I think the committee structure you talked about earlier is the process for doing that. Once we know what that committee process is, then I can start to recommend names to you. And also, is it's a collaborative, collaborative process because I appoint, you confirm. So as we move through this process, I want to make sure we're sort of walking down the path together in terms of um, you know, the, uh, the select board had a very distinct process over the last two years uh, for appointing people where there's a, a, co a comprehensive interview process that included a member from the select board, um, the chair of the committee, and the staff liaison to the committee. So it was very um, in-depth and uh, took a lot of organizing and scheduling so it, to get four people into the room at the same time. But, it, but that was a good process in general. Um, so it's a process I would like to duplicate in some ways as long as it's manageable. Where we are today is that it's kind of status quo. The, the select board had foresight to say the council's not going to get to this in the first month of December, so let's extend, let these people continue to serve in their capacity until we're ready to move to the next phase. And so you have some outstanding appointments on ZBA, for instance, and as of December 31st on planning board, that you will have to say, how do we want to engage? And one of those tools is to reach out to the community to engage people. And it's going to take some time to continue to build that up. So I think we, we don't have to rush on this because the status quo is OK. Um, but we need to get our systems in order and systems in place and start to do the, the work of all the people that you talked with during your campaigns to say, oh, you, this person said, said they were interested in this thing, get them to put their name up through the, the activity form and things like that. So um, there are some sort of uh, names that I can put forward to you. Um, if you get that memo, I, I would like to be able to tell the people whose names I'm putting forward what your process is going to be so they know what the process is going forward. So I think this won't really happen until January, but there's time for you once you get your systems in place for us to start moving on it. Okay. Councilor Schreiber. So I'm curious about the incumbents. So there are a lot of these folks on holdover appointments that would like to be reappointed. So do they, would they have to fill out this community activity form or how do we consider incumbents? How will that be handled, Mr. Bachman? So for my appointments, we would call, we would reach out to them and see if they wanted to uh, continue. The select board had a policy, which I think they noted in their memo to you, about uh, um, term limits, in essence, which right. was about six years. It's a question for the council. Do you, and for your appointments, do you believe in term limits or not? Is that a value that you want to bring to your appointment process? And for me, it's, on, it's um, generally, I believe that that's the case, but I also believe that there's a lot of uh, advantages to having people who have had experience to serve on a committee so I, I reserve the judgment to make that on a case-by-case -case basis. So it sounds to me like we have a, another whole big discussion to have, and uh, it would be added to next week's agenda on this committee process. Um, and in addition to that, it sounds to me like we, in addition to going back and looking at the committees, that we discussed earlier today, we may actually want to um, vote to approve some of those committees next week as well, so that we can get an appointments committee particularly going, as well as the others that are equally important. Okay. Are there other, d yes. 
Councillor Steinberger. Yeah, it, and my recollection was that um, we amended the appointment pr re process, the process for making appointments slightly to say that for some committees, based upon the judgment of the appointing authority, that it may not be necessary to have um, a huge complement um, of people who are doing the interviews, that that's appropriate for some committees, but that there's some committees that are not. Um, and my other observation is that uh, some of the committees we were, we were hearing as a select board, and they're still hearing, I'm still hearing little bits and pieces of, we've got to fill this position. And it either falls because of the cycle in which the committee works, that it has a lot of work to do during the next uh, several months, uh, coinciding frequently with the budget development process, or because of vacancies, which is, I think, what has been indicated by a couple of committees, and the fact that they are really very close to not being able to have a quorum, even with the quorum okay. plus one requirement. So it might be helpful to ask the town manager to consult with staff who work with various committees and get their recommendations and then have him give the recommendations, um, channel them through um, his office so that we get an indication of whether there are committees that uh, really need quicker attention than others. Okay. And then place those committees on a priority. Is there any further comment on the committees? Councillor Councillor Bre Councillor Brewer. So, since we probably only have one more December meeting, I yes. think one of the things that we will be discussing next week, but I hope, but as I understand it, I was just hoping to frame it a little more in terms of we don't have any idea how to confirm appointments in terms of that's not been something we've done before. It's not something we've seen this body do before. Right. And so it worked a little differently when the select board did in fact have to confirm a few of the town manager's appointments. But we actually did mostly our own appointments and have confirmed a few of his legally. So what would that look like? For example, for select board, what it looked like was he said, I want these people and we said, okay, and that was the confirmation process. Okay. If people are expecting something else from that confirmation process, I hope they will think a lot about that before next week as to what that would look like. We've also, as you saw in the memo, we've done interviews and the various types of interviews like Mr. Steinberg and Mr. Bachman have talked about. We did them privately. Other communities have people come and sit here in public comment and have people pepper them with questions. So uh, that's not been the Amherst style, but if, if that's the kind of thing you're thinking about, I think it's important that people bring some of those details forward because whoever we put on that council committee to talk about appointments is going to need to hear those ideas and figure out what's gonna happen when he actually wants to bring us some appointments in January when that committee won't have had a ton of time to meet and think through what those choices are because we are going to be inventing a system which might be a really simple one, but it might be more complex than that. I hesitate to ask that we discuss that process now since it was not on the agenda, but we will need to discuss it and hopefully have something to discuss it with next week as we look at what will be the process for the appointments to be considered, okay? Is there any, yes, Councillor Ross. So I just wanna make sure we're, uh, I'm clear on, on what's happening. Uh, it, it appears there's sort of three aspects of appointments that we need to consider and have a discussion. Uh, one is how we handle appointments that we as a council make uh, with regard to planning board, ZBA, and also uh, committees of the council. One is how we deal with um, the confirmation process of uh, appointments that are recommended by the town manager. And then the third would be uh, what role, if any, that we have in the interview process uh, for the town manager's appointments, uh, whether we uh, take on, adapt, or discard the process that was outlined 
um, by the select board with regard to the council. So it seems like there's, there's three different conversations uh, that need to take place because there's three different ways that we will interact uh, or potentially interact with appointments. Is that correct? I appreciate that summary, but I want to add to the fact that we have two different uh, kinds of approvals for from the town manager. One is for committees, but the other one is for department heads. And it's a very different kind of personnel in that case. And the committee on appointments will have to address both. And yet both require looking at the process in terms of how public, et cetera. Okay, and that is part of what we'll have to bring forward with the discussion about the Appointments Committee. Other further comments on that? All right, uh, we are moving on to action items, which is number seven. And the first is the Ad Hoc Rules and Procedures Committee. And uh, just note that in your packet today, we did include the ad hoc rules and we included the rules of procedure that we adopted last week. We have a committee working on that. And I just have to pause for a moment and ask, I don't, I can't seem to find my copy of the charge to that committee. I think it may be something we will come back to at the end of the agenda of the action items, okay? Yeah, okay. Let's move on to the Board of License Commissioners. And uh, in this case, uh, this is a charge that the select board actually approved and we are actually, actually actually asking the council to reaffirm. So I need a motion and a second that we reaffirm the charge to the, license to the Board of License Commissions. Do I have a motion? To approve. I'll make a motion to okay. approve. A second? Second. Now we can discuss it. Okay, so we are on item 7B, Board of License Commissioners, and it is a charge that was, pre that was approved by the select board. Let me just add that this is a function now of the town manager. It used to be a function of the select board in a very serious and very time-consuming way, and this is something that now requires a separate board. Are there questions, comments, discussion? Councillor Haneke. I have a question. It's not really about the charge. It's about do we have potential, is the town manager, um, have there been applicants since this charge was approved a while ago? Have there been people applying for it such that when we approve this, we might see appointees soon. Um, I know the charter requires the appointments to happen, I believe, within 60 days of the council swearing in. So we've got a short window. Um, so I was curious where that process is. Count, uh, Mr. Bachman, please. Thank you. Uh, we have had some interest. We have not advertised for it. We have got the press ready to go for tomorrow morning, assuming that there was a more thorough discussion about um, you were comfortable with the charge, and we had a process for having those names come forward. I understand the time frame for appointments. Uh, the charter does envision some. Uh, we have not had any license issues that have popped up in the interim uh, since the select board has demised. But um, you know, we have. I've had one or two people who've expressed interest. But with after tonight's meeting, we have a press release ready to go out and additional research, you know, outreach to people. Are there other questions, comments? Yes, Council, um, Councilor Pam. In, in the past, um, the select board did this, is that correct? Yes. And so they didn't require any particular expertise in the different professions? Or did they call in people? Because it sounds very specialized stuff to me. Well, Councilor Brewer, would you speak to that? 
for hours probably, but um, <laughs> to, try, to try and be really brief about it, what happened was the select board had been, let's just talk about alcohol licenses because that's the most fraught in the community. People don't care nearly as much about secondhand licenses and that sort of thing, um, but alcohol licenses. Particularly fraught, there is a very clear state process that local licensing authorities have to abide by, and select boards are always the local licensing authority when you have a select board form of government. Cities have separate board of license commissioners. One of the advantages of having the select board do it is because we were involved in so many different aspects of the community, we partly considered it a safety issue and we partly considered it an economic development issue. And one of the things that's interesting about having it be a completely separate body is they don't have any of those responsibilities. So we were trying to be sensitive to the business community. You know, are we putting you through a reasonable process? We had excellent staff that would hold people's hands through an incredibly elaborate process through applying for the, through the state. And but we also wanted to make it clear that we had expectations as a community with undergraduates that obviously are trying to access alcohol when they're not old enough. And Mr. Steinberg had a particularly infamous set of questions that people who sh should have been prepared to answer given that he had been asking those questions a long time. The Board of License Commissioners has no idea how to do any of that because there's been no other Board of License Commissioners in Amherst prior to this. So there is no expertise in our community in this area whatsoever. What makes it even more complicated and what I've asked the town manager to talk to town council about and I'm sure he has in one of his thousands of conversations with them is under membership it says no person while a member of the board of licensed commissioners shall have any financial interest directly or indirectly. And where that gets complicated is we have alcohol licenses at the university and both colleges how direct is the interest? If you're a bartender at the event, then that maybe is a direct interest, or are you the person who actually makes money off the event, and that's the direct interest. So that's something I'm sure he's working out with council, but it's not been a prior issue, because if we had financial conflict, because we had been part owner of a restaurant that came before us, then we would have just, as a board of license commissioners, taken ourselves out of the situation but we were required to do that role by being a virtue of a select board. It's a whole different ball game with this. And so it's not entirely clear yet who we can recruit from as the pool. And luckily the town manager already has it set up in terms of staff support and we've had excellent staff support on this so far. But it isn't like somebody lives here that is just an expert in this area. So <laughs> it's complicated. Are there any other comments on this particular charge, questions, et cetera? Hearing none, I want to call the question. The question is to affirm or, re or approve the Board of License Commissioner's charge. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, the next one is the bylaw review committee. The bylaw review committee, as we met last week, we um, actually I'm going to ask the town clerk to refresh my memory and give us what we did last week so that we are now moving to approve the charge. And I believe that by approving the charge, we now move to the appointment of the bylaw review committee, our reappointment. Madam President, the, um, the council established the bylaw review committee, and yes, you are moving on to charge and appointments. Thank you. Okay, so we established the bylaw review committee. I'm reminding people in the past that we basically did have a bylaw review committee of three very dedicated people. They have brought forward a lot of information to us. We are still in the process of reviewing and approving that. So this is a charge I would like, I need a motion and a second, and then we can discuss. It's a motion to approve the charge to the bylaw review committee. Do I hear a motion? 
I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. And further discussion? Yes. Uh, Councillor Haneke. No, she, she had her hand up first. <laughs> um, the, the charge as presented to us does not include a number of voting members. Um, so, you know, it, and the staff support for some reasons has not determined, whereas at, in the charge itself versus the top where the staff support says town attorney. So um, I, I think we need to change the staff support in the listing to town attorney and we need to determine a number of voting members. And then there was one um, clerical error, error I saw, um, which was in the second paragraph that said, in accordance with the town charter, the purpose of the bylaw review committee shall mm -hmm. review the town bylaws, which didn't make sense to me. It's not a full sentence. So I thought it should be shall be to, quote, review the town bylaws. Um, so, you know, I, I think last week we didn't, set a number because we were going to discuss how many we actually wanted on it and whether we wanted counselors on it. So I think that's a discussion we need to have. Okay. I'm going to make uh, the first two is just friendly amendments. Amendments. So in the third paragraph under th authority, the second full sentence, it should read, the review shall be to conduct. Is that the one? Yes. I'm sorry. It's the second paragraph under authority that starts in accordance with the town charter. After the word shall on that line, B we should two. add B2 and okay. then colon. Thank you. So it is the second paragraph, uh, the first sentence, in accordance with the town charter, the purpose of the bylaw review committee shall B2, adding the words B2 and then colon. And the other one is under staff support to remove not determined and in, in fact replace that with town attorney. But the other question is the number of people on the bylaw review committee and we should now discuss that. Yes, and Councillor that, Shane. And what I want to build on that both, the question is how many councillors and do we want to have some people who are not councillors on that committee as well? To, this is a, it's basically a close read of the revisions we were given compared to the original. It, it can, okay. So the question really is, is this a committee with counselors? Is a committee with outside people? Uh, is a committee of a combination? Discussion, yes. Councillor Steinberg. Uh, on staff support, I would be interested in Mr. Bachman's uh, recommendations on this. The staff support for the last committee um, was also substantially, as it was Mr. Kravitz, who's the Economic Development Director, who is an attorney and uh, quite familiar with the issues and uh, the uh, uh, amount of work that he did, I think, was substantially greater as far as the just the day-to-day -day workings. And then mm -hmm. they consulted the town attorney um, as appropriate. Uh, so um, his, his uh, recommendation there might be helpful uh, as to how he thinks it might best be staffed to assist the committee. Mr. Rockman. Um Thank you, Madam President. The, uh, I have not made a determination as to whether what staff, town staff um, support would go to this committee. It depends somewhat on the uh, structure of the committee and the kind of work that they intend to take on themselves. Uh, the charter calls for the town attorney to provide guidance, so that's why that's in there it's, uh, okay. specifically. Typically, what we did with the previous bylaw review committee is we used internal staff just so we weren't using town, our town attorney all the time. Right. Okay. But I, again, it, Mr. in terms of Mr. Kravitz, he did a spectacular job. I, um, that's a conversation I'd want to have with him in terms of what other duties I want him to take on as well. Okay. Councillor Bellman. My recommendation would be to include the three members of the committee who already did the initial work because they've already thought through and did a lot of work and to invite them to work with the counselors so we can acknowledge their work and also maybe move faster because they've already done a lot of the thinking behind it. Councilor DeAngelis. My memory is that Bernie Kubiak no. and, and Bob Ritchie um, were interested in continuing and uh, wanted very much to continue 
and uh, they were going to speak to Ken. So I, I would, I agree that we should have them on the committee if possible. If they, in fact, confirm Ken, their willingness. Yes, yes. And I don't know that we've heard anything further than my conversation with them briefly on Friday. Madam Ken. President, through you. So, so the president went to their bylaw review committee meeting on Friday morning and talked to them, uh, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, they were still in, in considering it. In considering, and Mr. I think uh, Mr. Ritchie and Mr. Kubiak were interested. Mr. Hargraves wanted to know what was the time expectation. How long was it this uh, additional task expected okay. to last? And I think that's a question for the council to consider. Okay. S um, further question? Okay. So really, the question is whether two or three of them are willing to continue. Um, I personally feel that if they are willing to continue and we can satisfy their questions as to time frame, we should take advantage of that steep learning curve that they have already gone through. Uh, so I would say up to three members of the existing committee. But then the real question is, do, um, I should say the previous committee, um, or is there a council person that, do we feel a council person needs to be on this? Yes. Councilor DeAngelis. I think we definitely need a council person or two on the committee. Is there a preference or further comment on that? Councilor uh, Pam. I, I agree there should be council members on the committee. Okay. Is there, yes, Councilor Dumont? I agree with that too. Is there a preference, I'm, I'm just gonna come back. Uh, so right now we've had up to two named, is that the number you want? Councilor Panicky. So I, two things, one is another typo I found. Um, in the quote of membership, the town council may retain any members of the prior, instead of meeting, it should be committee um, or appoint new members. In terms of committee members, I think my preference would be three residents and maybe one or two council for a total of five. So if, you know, so you could have three councilors and two residents, depending on what the current bylaw review committee members per the charter want or you could maybe continue with the three residents that the select board had decided for the prior bylaw review committee and put two councilors on. Odd numbers are always in my mind preferable to even numbers. Okay. Further comment on this? We accept your friendly amendment at this point. Uh, yes, <laughs> Councilor Ross. Uh, I would just like to agree with Councillor Haneke on odd numbers, which could be useful for any voting body. Um, given the uh, vast experience that the current members of the bylaw review committee bring uh, and the possibility that they may continue on, it would be my preference that should it be an odd council, uh, that the resident members who have that deep expertise be in the majority of the committee. Um, so if it was a five-member committee, my preference would be three residents, two councillors. Okay. Any further comment? Yes, Councillor Chain. Um, these are the bylaws of the town. So I'm yes. assuming when this document comes back to us that we all have to read it. And vote. And vote. You know, so it's so I think it's really important there are two councillors reading it very closely. I'm a couple just residents have offered to read it closely, that even changing the order of paragraphs can sometimes change the meaning. So it's just a very close read. Okay. So let me, yes, Councilor Brewer. If I may, um, when we are ready to alter this, and I actually have a completely different part of this that we're not talking about right now because it's not number of members. But the part that's under membership, that this is a nice explanatory piece, but this doesn't belong in the charge. This part about that it says we can retain members of the prior committee, it, that doesn't belong in the membership section. That That's okay. gone, that's irrelevant after tonight's discussion. Mm -hmm. But the other aspect, it, writing the number of members is not determined in the charter. It, that's not something you want to have in a document moving forward. That's the explanation for how we're trying to get there. 
and so then we can lose that typo because we don't need that sentence anymore. But I, the authority part is important, and mm -hmm. I appreciate the explanation of the membership. I'm just saying, as a charge document, it no longer needs to Thank be Thank you. And then on a completely different note, the um, item that I was concerned about is actually on the other side, where it says that the report needs to be done in the year. So back then to our membership. I would very much like if the three people who are serving now are willing to do that, then yes, three of them, two counselors. If, however, Mr. Hargraves or one of the others does not choose to continue, I would not like to replace them with other residents. I do not think the learning curve is appropriate at that point, and I would fill in numbers with additional counselors at that point rather than recruiting from our resident population, given that this is a one-year time frame which will go by super fast, <laughs> given all the work that's in front of them. Okay. So let me try this on the committee that we have a motion on the floor to approve the charge. However, there have been some changes to the charge, a couple of them in terms of friendly amendments, and then finally a discussion about membership itself. So the char changes to the charge uh, that were friendly would be after the second paragraph, first sentence, at the end of it, it would read, shall be to, colon. And under staff support, even though we have discussed that, it remains not determined because this is an appointment that Mr. Bockelman will make. However, under membership, the we would strike everything in there and we would designate that the committee would be made up of five members the preference being three from the original committee and two councilmen. <coughs> and in the absence of the three, of any one of the three not being willing to continue, <coughs> they would be replaced by a council person. I think I need to do that as a motion to amend. I'm looking to you, Mr. Bachman, yes. Well, you could do that as a motion to amend, and then we could bring the revisions back to the council so you could review it again next next week if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Or we can vote, can we vote on it tonight? Just vote it tonight, and we can bring it back as a final form next okay. week. Okay. So the amendment is really about membership. Can the town clerk read the motion? I will try. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the motion under membership would be to establish the bylaw review committee made up of five members, preference being three from the original bylaw review committee and two counselors. And if any of the three original committee members declines to serve, that they would be replaced with a counselor. Do I hear a second? second? We have a second. Further discussion on the amendment to the charge. Hearing none, I call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Okay. And then we'll go back to the original. I'm sorry? It, I'm sorry, the, it was unanimous. Okay. Now we go back to the original charge to, and to the original motion to adopt this charge. Do I hear any further discussion? All those in, oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Brewer. I'm sorry, thank you. Um, I think we should have a separate motion and I meant to check, I meant to check on our motion sheet. There should be a separate motion for special municipal employee status that takes place after we approve the charge that's usually it's just done as a two-part thing rather than trying to wedge it all into one motion but we often forget to put that on our motion sheet and I don't think it's there so I would like to just say that we do that as a secondary issue as opposed to putting it into this motion okay so all those in favor 
Aye. Opposed, that was unanimous. Uh, Councilor Brewer, would you please make your motion? I move to designate the bylaw review committee as special municipal employees. Is it, okay. And is there discussion or Councilor Brewer for the purposes of educating the council members, would you please explain that motion? But you want it to, me to do it briefly, and that's, that's tough. But basically what the gist of it is, is that if you're not a special municipal employee status, which some of our committees are not, and if you aren't, then the difficulty is, say you're serving on the bylaw review committee, and it also so happens that you wanna represent some a client in front of the design review board. You can't do that unless you have special municipal employee status. Okay. There may still be conflict of interest problems you still have to sort out with the ethics commission. You may still wanna make a phone call, but it's simply not okay to represent the town in more than one way. And so special municipal employee status is something that is true for many of our committees. It's sometimes by mass general law, and it, this would be a particular committee. In fact, in most cases, I think it, I personally think it's a generally good idea. It's under chapter, for all of you who I know wanna go home and read this, it's under mass general law 268A. And it's, a bit, again, about ethics, but it enables people who serve in professional capacities in town to have a little more leeway in town service. You're still not going to be able to, you know, be on one body and then present your clients to that same body. But it's, right. if you can separate the two and you have SME status, then you are legally allowed to do it. Right. Are there questions about that? Thank you, Councilor Brewer, that was helpful. Any further questions on the amendment? The motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is, in fact, to approve a charge to the rank choice for a rank choice voting commission. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Haneke. I move to approve the draft committee charge for the Rank Choice Voting Commission with one change in the, I guess it's the fourth paragraph, the quote that starts a voting method under authority, the word should be shall, not shell. Okay. <laughs> it's just a misspelling. I'm sorry. It should read how? A voting method? Shall. S-H-A-L-L. -L. Oh, I'm sorry. It was amended. I'm so, thank you very much. It was amended in um, a later version posted earlier today. Okay. And so we have a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Second. Councilor Ross, thank you. And discussion about this particular charge. And while, um, I just wanna point out that while Councilor Brewer pointed out earlier that in the previous one, uh, we did not need that in this particular case, the charter was actually quite explicit about the um, membership of this committee. All this does is establish the committee. We then can move after we have appointed the committee uh, to the, rec I mean, after we have approved the charge, we can move to recruiting and appointing the committee. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh yes, I'm sorry, Councilor Brewer. I am so sorry. In the report section, I think we, we are still working out our template for charges. We knew the old one needed work and I really appreciate the effort people have been putting into this one. Um, the second sentence is not part of reports. The second sentence needs to be called something like, town council action. It's not a report. The report is made by the Ranked Choice Voting Commission. The longer point of all of this is that the town council is supposed to act by voting upon the proposed measure. So it needs its own heading, and I don't care what it's called, but it's not a report. It's a separate thing, and we, we just need to get in the habit of having committees do one thing, and in some cases, town council then has to act later 
and this would be one of those places. And I probably should have caught that in the bylaw review too as well, but that uh, looks okay. Thank you. I would like to suggest as a friendly amendment that we call the second sentence and pull it out as approval by town council, colon. Are there questions? Okay. So the bylaw that you, was posted later today or at, earlier today did correct in the second paragraph, the second line quoting, a voting method shall. Yes, Councillor Haneke. Um, thank you for pointing that out, Councillor Brewer. It reminded me when I reread that sentence that the charter actually says the town council shall adopt the proposed measure with or without amendments, not shall vote upon. And so I would recommend we change the language to whatever the heading you just decided was, to the town council shall adopt the proposed measure with or without amendments within 90 days of receipt. Okay, so that the new heading for that is adoption by town council. Um, the sentence shall read, the town council shall adopt with or without amendments within 90 days of receipt. Shall adopt the proposed measure. Shall adopt the pr proposed measure, measure. Okay, once again, it now reads, adopt, adoption by town council, colon, the town council shall adopt the proposed measure with or without amendments within 90 days of receipt. Is there further discussion about the charge? Hearing none, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. And the next is the, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, the motion on special status. I move to designate the ranked choice voting commission as having special municipal employee status. I, any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we're moving on to the Participatory Budgeting Commission. This is also um, from the Charter, and actually we discussed it earlier this evening as we were discussing various committees. Um, are there, I, I, is there a motion? Councilor Ross. Move to approve the participatory budgeting commission charge as presented. Second. Councilor Giangelo, second. Discussion. We're gonna say the same thing. All right. I, I would just go back to the report section that I think Councilor Brewer was also gonna mention that we need to pull the second sentence out and title it action by town council. And then the town council shall act by voting upon the proposed measure with or without amendments within 90 days of receipt. And the charter does say on this one by voting upon, it does not indicate that we must adopt. Okay. Are there further comments, discussions, etc.? So it is the charge as you were presented. The only change is to pull out under the reports, pull out the second sentence into a separate category called action by town council. The sentence will read, the town council shall act by voting upon the proposed measure with or without amendments within 90 days of receipt. Councilor Brewer. I'm sorry, I'm confused and I'm sure somebody's gonna help me out here. Term, why, so term of appointment is two years with a report to town council by December 1, 2020. Okay, so, all right. Cool, good, thank you. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Would you like to make it December 10th? <laughs> okay. Okay. Any further questions on this? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. And uh, Councilor Brewer, the next motion. I, I move to designate the Participatory Budgeting Commission as having SME Special Municipal Employee status. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Uh, we have two other action items. One is our meeting schedule, and I it has been posted to you. Yes, I'm sorry. Madam Tell President, you, you had asked about the... Um, Rules of Procedure Committee charge, which yes. we have copies of. For some reason, it did not get into your packet. If you'd like those now or next week, whatever. Uh, why don't we defer till next week? Okay. All right. Um, can, can we start to meet the four people before I, we get yes. the charge? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm looking to you, uh, town manager. May they meet without the charge? Yes. Yes, you may. Okay, so we have before us a calendar. I do want to um, note that we will be changing October 7th, 2019. That is the eve of Yom Kippur, and we would not be meeting on that night. So we'll be finding another date. We'll come back to you with another option in the future, okay? Uh, do I hear a motion to accept this calendar? I so move. Councilor Schreiber is for, uh, moved and seconded. Second. Councilor Pam. Any further discussion? Yes, Councilor Brewer. Thank you for checking this against the uh, various celebrations and commemorations calendar. The other thing I just wanted to mention, and I'm don't need to fight about it, but one of the things that traditionally we did not do in the past is we did not have the select board meet on the night before an election, and because people were often very busy, and so, and also it was just complicated if some of them were running, um, as is typically the case. So in this case, of course, there won't be any counselors running in November of 2019, but there will be school committee members, library trustees, et cetera, and people may well be embroiled in those. Engaged, engaged, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> in those campaigns. And so you may want to consider trying to find, I know November's hard because of Thanksgiving and sometimes mm -hmm. other uh, religious celebrations, <coughs> but we may want to consider that as well. Okay, thank you. So with the two dates we will be, re yes, Councillor Haneke. No, I was going to summarize, so why don't you go ahead? I, I was wondering, I was looking at the January, February, and <laughs> because the January 21st meeting had to be moved back a week to the 28th, I was wondering if it would be wise to move the February meeting back one week to February 11th so that you don't have two meetings two weeks in a row, and instead you've then, because the 18th has already been pushed, you actually end up meeting every other week between January and February instead of two weeks in a row and then two weeks off and then a week in a row. Okay, so this would be to substitute February 4th with February 11th. Councillor Schreiber. I'm not sure how much we want to go into this, but October 28th seems like a good splitting the difference between the, oh, I see. Never mind, forget it. Yeah, yeah. The jury shall disregard the... Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to suggest the following. We do make the change of February 4th to February 11th, and we identify that we will be finding alternative dates for October 7th, 2019, and November 4th, 2019. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, Councillor Pam. I thought there was a thing about meeting only once in... July and August. Be fine with me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor DeAngelis. Uh, that would be fine with me as well, but I also think we could make that decision later. So there, 
So these are the dates as they stand. At some point we may change them and or decide that we are going to not meet. Yes, or meet at another time. Councillor Steinberg. Uh, one, this is just for history purposes, but it's something that you might be aware of. Um, one of our responsibilities um, as a council is to do the evaluation of the town manager. And uh, what the select board normally did was we did that by having summer meetings um, to focus on that so because that was a time that there was generally less activity going on. Um, but there's a whole process question of how a body of this size is going to actually engage in that process. So I think I just wanted to point it out more than suggest anything special about it in relation to what Ms. Angela said. The other thing, though, that I wanted to point out is, is that occasionally there are times for additional meetings. And um, the one that was referred to a little bit earlier was the um, what has been had been dubbed as a four boards meeting, which is probably now might be a three boards meeting. It depends upon the finance committee is considered a separate body, but the purpose was to hear from the finance director and the town manager on financial matters and projections for the coming year. And um, if there's an intent to have that kind of an activity, the tradition had been since it was all, there was also a school committee and library trustees uh, to do it in the late afternoon of the Thursday of Veterans Day week. And um, it was not um, normal, that, um, but we did on one occasion have additional agenda items for the select board, but normally the select board only met as a group to be a part of that presentation. So that is a meeting that could be scheduled in the future. And I might also note that uh, we did actually call a meeting for this past Saturday when we had the four towns meeting. And we did have a um, quorum present. And so we, we actually attended that meeting as a body. So there are other meetings that may be added. Uh, I think this is a framework to start from, is how I would like to, to look at this. Uh, for the moment, let's just Go ahead, vote on it as a framework. Obviously, we will be posting meetings and discussing them as they come up. Do I hear a, all those in, any other comments? All those in favor? Okay, passes unanimously. And the next meeting date that we have set is a week from tonight, and it is December 17th at 7 p.m. Is there any further comment on that? I don't know that that needs to be an action item. Okay, uh, let me just, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I actually would like it if we could revisit the time of the meetings um, because at our last meeting, we decided that it should be seven. Um, and it seems like we should have some kind of a process uh, whereby we could sort of like get a sense of the group because um, I, I'm kind of assuming if we had voted on it, we probably would not have gone to seven o'clock. But I, maybe not, maybe not, because okay. we didn't have a sense of the group. Um, but I, I guess I feel like we should keep it at 6.30 because of the fact that we have such a heavy load of work and we could get more done if we're going to 10. So um, that is just my opinion. Are there other opinions on the issue of timing? Yes, Councillor Pam. Okay. I stand by suggesting 7 o'clock. Um, we talk about uh, trying to get different people running to be on town council, and I find 7 o'clock much more f a family-friendly time. And for example, tonight we fed the grandchildren dinner, and I was glad that I was able to be there for that. So. Okay. Councillor DeAngelis. Thank you, Councillor Anneke. <laughs> I know. No, I won't. Um, I would like to go to 6.30. I think that we have a lot to do. Um, I also um, would like us to vote on it. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to say. 
Um, I can't remember what it is. Oh, we, we meet every other week approximately, normally. Um, so I feel like it's, it's not like, it's, so it's two nights um, out of a month. And I, I think that having that extra half hour could be valuable. So let me uh, ask for a mo. Yes, Councillor Haneke. So I, I'm just going to mention two things. I actually support 7, but I believe last week we did actually vote with a motion for 7 p.m., so I just wanted to mention that. It's in my notes. I could be wrong. We don't, do we, we, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm referring to the town clerk at this point. You don't have to hold it. Oh, I cannot confirm that at this time. Okay. Councilor Dumont. I'm pretty sure we did vote, um, but my, I, I guess my point is that a couple of people said that they wanted seven we have 13 people here. Most people remain silent, so that might have, and we may run into this at other times where we might want to get a sense of the group on something like that um, before bringing the motion. May I suggest that we have a vote to reconsider the time that we meet? I'm making that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor to reconsider the time that we, that we meet? Okay, I have a motion on the floor. I'm now. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was okay. It was unanimous. Okay, thank you. All right. So the floor is open for a motion regarding what time we might meet. I'll move that Councilor we Schreiber. meet at six thirty, with okay. a hard end time of ten o'clock. Is there is there a second to that motion? Okay, uh, Councillor Ryan, uh, any further conversation? Yes, Councillor Haneke. I wonder if before we actually vote, we could hear from people on potential other times too, other councillors, you know, if, if what I heard from Councillor Dumont was that she wants an actual discussion, not, not potentially a binary choice, so it would be, Interesting to me to hear from other counselors as to what ideal times they might want. Discussion, please. Councilor Balmon. I, <clears throat> I would be interested in also seeing what would be most inclusive for people to participate from the public um, point of view, what makes it easy for people to come and participate in these forums. Um, we're not having public comment at this point. So could we maybe uh, invite um, town manager or anybody else or people from the select board, past the select board who have experience about how participation may okay. have varied with the time? Mr. Bachelman, is there a preference? Okay. I'm sure I do not. Mr. Brewer, I mean, Councillor Brewer, Councillor Steinberg. The only thing that I would add is that uh, at times we on the select board would ask staff to attend and uh, it was helpful to have the meetings be as early as possible so that staff, if they were asked to attend, could be put on an earlier part of the agenda when we could and that would um, be more courteous to them and to their use, use of their time. That was the only additional um, consideration that I'm aware of. Councillor DeAngelis. I had a conversation uh, with a couple of the employees and they would like us to be earlier. Um, and they would like us to be at 6.30 because uh, otherwise if their shift ends at 10.30, uh, in the winter, that's going to be a problem for maintenance and cleaning up and putting chairs and things away. Okay. Other comments? Discussion? Councillor Haneke. So I know this is probably something that might fall within the Rules Committee that has not met yet, but and I've heard that 
it might be preferable for staff, but if we're looking at public comment to address Councillor Balamilne's um, comment, public comment, if it b continues to be at the very beginning of a meeting, might be very hard for individuals with families or kids where you've still got people with pickups and drop-offs and dinner and everything going on right around that time for the public to actually attend the public comment period. Um, we watched even at seven o'clock tonight that a number of public actually came in late. Um, so if we, and, and so that's why I say it might be within the rules committee better to address when public comment within a meeting should be, but I think we have to be very concerned and aware of where we put public comment in a meeting that starts at 6.30, because if the public comment is at 6.30, I think we might be potentially reducing the ability of people to come and comment. So that's not speaking against the 6.30 start, but more to the issue of when public comment would be. Is that correct? Well, it's speaking to the whole, because right now public comment has okay. been put at the beginning, so if that remains the case until the okay. Rules Committee makes a recommendation, until that time, it would affect mm -hmm. that ability. Okay. Councilor Brewer. A couple of things associated with that. I hope desperately, as I've stated to you before, that we do not have public comment at the beginning. I think it was unfortunate that we had it at the beginning tonight because we heard about a topic that we were going to be talking about later, and we didn't get to frame the topic that way. The public mm -hmm. got to frame the topic. I think it's incredibly important to understand that we have forums, we have emails, we have phone calls, we have private meetings with people. There is absolutely nothing other than the fact that the Charter Commission put it in the Charter that would require us to have public comment because that's not normally how committees do business. All that input should be obtained another way. Public comment is for an extremely limited subset of the population. It's true that we had public comment, people show up at 6.30, 6.25, no problem if they knew that they were going to do public comment. There are also other people who never came at 6.30. I've also been at meetings that were at 7 or 7.30, and people, some people found the way to make it work, and some people never come, which is why public comment is not the primary way the public should be reaching us, because it is always going to be a subset of the population. So obviously I have very strong feelings about that. No matter what time we all decide on whatever split up kind of vote we have on when public comment's gonna be, the fact is the later we start, the later we start our work. Because resolutions and proclamations, I'm uncomfortable with those being early on in the agenda as well. We are, we are basically doing stuff for half an hour before we start doing things. And it is difficult to manage our time that way. Okay. So, and many of us obviously have been at work all day caring for children, et cetera, et cetera. So I would strongly consider going to 6.30 and trying it for a while. If Certainly if there are individual nights that it's, are particularly difficult for people, I think we could certainly consider flexing by half an hour. If that means next week is seven, fine. But I would seriously like us to consider 6.30. And again, without the Rules Committee having decided to bring it to you yet, I'm assuming the 10 o'clock hard stop is very appealing to people. OK. And considering we're approaching that 10 o'clock hard what? stop, um, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of meeting for our next meeting on November 7, excuse me, December 17th at 6.30, please approach. Right, say by I. Yes. Is this for one meeting only? No, is it's this for one meeting only or is this going forward? All right, let me reframe it. All those in favor of yes. Councillor, yes. Councillor Schreiber. I'd be happy to repeat the motion. Please was, repeat uh, the motion. That's great. That we meet at six thirty and hard stop at ten. Okay. The motion's been made and it was seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? So we have a f nine in favor and four opposed. Okay. So we'll tr be meeting at 6.30 on November, December 17th at the, in this room. I'm just quickly looking at the rest of the agenda and the only thing in which we actually 
we're going to have any further conversation as future agenda items and counselor comments. Um, I would like to make sure that we have a conversation about future agenda items, but we can defer it till next week. And also, are there any counselor comments? Yes, Councillor DeAngelis. I can do this. Aha. Any other <laughs> counselor comments? Councillor Shane. Um, I, I think we actually talked about future agenda items on trying to get to the finance and JP, the budget oh, issues did. for yes. next week. So yes. just that, those could be on the agenda. That'd be great. Future agenda items is not necessarily to say by next week. It's yeah. any time in the future. Yeah. And we keep a running list of those and then see when we can schedule them. Okay. Any other comments? Councillor Brewer. I don't think it's an agenda item. I think it's a task for somebody to perform, and it would be great if we had it for next Monday, but I'm not really holding my breath. And that is a schedule of all the things that are in the charter that we have to do within, you know, within th this forum has to be 10 days before that thing, and that thing has to happen 15 days after that, because we're, it, it feels a little overwhelming sometimes when you find yet another deadline I and another paragraph. I totally agree with you and had started such an item and then got onto something else. Uh, thank you. Yes, Councillor DeMond. Uh, another future agenda item, uh, I hope, will be a, uh, a motion for a... Um, adoption of a climate action plan and a sustainability, creation of a sustainability committee. Okay. Very soon. Okay, thank you. I would also suggest that, um, and I want you to consider this for discussion, but there are various groups and particularly within the town, some tours and meetings with different town committees that we would like to I would like to see us do as a way of educating us about the town that we are now in charge of governing. Um, so I would like to suggest that we work with the town manager with that as a future agenda item. Any other conversation? Any other future agenda items? Okay, any council comments besides I can make this work? <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. And let the record show that we only went four minutes over. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs>